A very good morning to all of you and a warm namaste. I am Sonali Ghai and I will be your host for this session. We are really thrilled to host you today. Through the day, you will discover how Amazon Web Services customers are building innovative solutions on the cloud to become more agile, respond faster to the change, and take their mission forward. Before we begin, a few ground rules. Kindly keep your mobile phones on silent mode. Kindly download the AWS Events app to share your valuable feedback with us. Please note that the session that you see today is being live streamed and also being recorded to be available online after a few weeks. With this, let's begin with the first session of the day, which is a panel discussion on digital public goods from India to the world on AWS, hosted by Deepti Dutt. Deepti is the head of strategic initiatives and smart infrastructure at AWS. Over to you, Deepti. Please introduce the topic and welcome the panelists. Thank you, Sonali. Good morning, everyone. It's my privilege, honor, and pleasure to be hosting this esteemed panel and you know, starting the day with something that we hold very dear to AWS public sector. Uh, the topic digital public good, you know, everything that we talk about at AWS public sector, making impact at scale, ensuring that we have solutions that reach out to masses, all those are embodied in digital public good, the term itself. You know, digital public good as defined by United Nations is open source software or open data or open AI models, open standards, open content that adhere to privacy and other applicable laws and best practices do no harm, and help attain sustainable development goals that UN has laid out. You know, what we notice here is, uh, in the last few years, there is so much traction that has built up uh, in development of DPG, adoption of D uh, DPGs, etc. And India is home to many of the DPGs. Whether we talk about India stack, uh, you know, uh, the COVID platform, everything that has evolved during COVID time, or the kind of solutions that we see in urban et area, etc. You know, this session brings together several thought leaders in DPG across healthcare, India stack, urban solutions, uh, who will share with us today how AWS is helping expedite building these DPGs and, and adoption of these DPGs across the globe. So uh, with no further ado, let me introduce my fellow panelists that we have, Mr. Debrat Nayak. He's a CTO, Chief Technology Officer of Digital India Corporation, DIC, and Director at National E-Governance Division under Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, MIT. Mr. Nayak has 27 years of experience in managing large-scale e-governance IT projects. He is leading projects of national importance such as DigiLocker, Umang, API Setu, Potion Tracker, OpenForge, Covin, amongst others. Welcome, Mr. Nayak. My next speaker is, Ch is Chandar Muthukrishnan. He is the COO, Chief Operating Officer of EGA Foundation. EGA Foundation, as you know, many of us know, they have deep focus on areas such as urban, healthcare, public finance, and sanitation. Chandar has got over 28 years of work experience in client solutions, consulting, technical program management, and product engineering. Chandar has done 10 years stint in past with a startup and a 10 year stint in corporate world. My next speaker is Ramesh, Ramesh Narayanan. He's a Chief Technology Officer of MOSIP, Modular Open Source Identity Platform. An entrepreneur with 25 years of experience in building software products and solutions. A veteran of two startups, you know, both focusing on impact area, one that brought banking to rural India and second focus on employability. So, uh, good morning and thank you for joining me on this panel discussion today. You know, Chinder, I'll start with you. As I just defined DPG, that's something, you know, open source content, open software that does no harm and helps achieve uh, overall, you know, uh, sustainable development that does better to the country. There's also this Digital Public Goods Alliance, a global entity. And EGA Foundation has been a very close member defining DPG, DPI, uh, and other, other such parameters. So I would request you to throw some light on what DPGs are, what DPIs are, a lot of work that EGA Foundation is doing in this space. And you know, also if you can share uh, how you, AWS has helped you along this journey. Oh, thanks, Dipti. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so EGA's vision is to uh, catalyze achievement of SDGs and e improve ease of living for citizens uh, through use of DPGs. 
deployment of technology across uh, problem solving and stuff like that. So Ego has been building DPGs for the last 20 years. A uh, couple of examples of DPGs that Ego has built is uh, Digit. Uh, Digit stands for Digital Infrastructure for uh, Governance, Impact, and Transformation. And Digit is used for uh, transforming cities. We have applications like property tax, public grievance redressal, applying for trade licenses, and things like that. And uh, uh, Digit is a DPG. And, and Digit is also certified by the DPGA, uh, DPGA the alliance. And a DPI equivalent of Digit would be something like MSEVA in Punjab. So the state of Punjab, we've implemented Digit, and it's called MSEVA. MSEVA provides citizens access to blazing uh, public grievances, applying for uh, trade licenses, paying miscellaneous files, uh, paying water charges, and things like that. So it makes, it makes citizen services very accessible in an easy to use manner on a mobile or a web app that people could potentially consume these services on. And that's an example of a DPI. Digit has also been selected by the central ministry, the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, as the national platform for urban governance. And the DPI in that example, in this example, is, is called Upyog. And Upyog is now deployed centrally on AWS. And uh, it is available for multiple states to, to sort of sign up and start using. And the, and, and the Upyog is part of the NUDM program, National Urban Gov uh, uh, Digital Mission. And NUDM has so far signed up 14 states. So uh, what this is doing is it's making the DPG deployed centrally as a DPI and making it available to about 14 different states to, and progressively the whole country can use, start using it to uh, provide citizen services in an easy to use uh, manner. Another example of a, of a DPG that Ego was built is uh, a platform called Divoc. Uh, Divoc was built to uh, manage the vaccine supply chain and vaccine credentialing as part of the COVID response uh, uh, program. And, and Divoc is currently used in five countries uh, to provide vaccine uh, certification, and including India. So our own homegrown Coven uses uh, the Divoc verifiable credentials to provide uh, vaccine certificates. ICMR in India also uses uh, uh, the DIVOC verifiable credentials to provide a digitally signed uh, uh, COVID test certificate. These are examples of DPI that can truly operate at population scale. As you guys know, uh, DIVOC, uh, Di COVID has done 2 billion plus certificates. Uh, we, we collect hundreds of crores using our uh, DPIs across the country in these various states that Digit is live in. Digit is live in about 1,000 cities as of now. And through the NUDM, uh, with 14 states signing up, three are currently being implemented. We will soon, in the next three to four years, cover all the 4,500 cities uh, on the urban governance uh, platform. And AWS has been an integral part of this, this whole journey. Uh, deploying applications to the cloud is really quick. We're able to get things live in, in a couple of weeks. We don't have to wait for infrastructure procurement processes to happen. Fitting performance tests. If you need to do like uh, population scale testing, the infra is available for the application to scale out and test really, really rapidly. And uh, that's been incredibly helpful for us to uh, manage our development lifecycle uh, through the whole uh, you know, testing and development uh, process. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Chandar. So you know, essentially what you're saying is DPG is a, is a solution that gets developed as a product, and DPI is an implemented instance of a DPG. Right, and I remember, you know, Divoc when it was getting implemented during pandemic time. I think it came up in less than one or two months' time. Yeah, Few weeks is when it was developed. That's right. And as you rightly said, you know, the immediate pilots and everything that you need to do, do performance testing. You just don't lock in any infra. Just do and you move on. Mr. Nayak, I'll come to you. You know, uh, we we hear a lot about India stack, and you know, in pandemic time and over the last few years, government has also been instrumental in developing a number of solutions. Uh, 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 which now, uh, you know, very large digital public infrastructure they have become. That option is very, very large. So, can you talk some, uh, you know, throw some light on some of the uh, some some of these large public infrastructure that you are working on and how the journey has been for you towards rolling out some of them? Thanks and good morning to all of you. I think after Aadhaar, actually, if you look at that, uh, Aadhaar is the biggest platform we build. Other is the identity platform we build, but if you look at that, uh, we built DigiLocker after that. In 2015, we built DigiLocker, and it is uh, continuously growing as a large uh, 
digital uh, documents for every citizen's life that the, what that we are looking at that the for life cycle of uh, your birth certificate to the, your death certificates so if you look at the digilocker as the whole as a part everybody you know, even if we want to look at the after that we build the coven in India is the first country, I think, to provide the digital certificate, the vaccination certificate in the world. That is the first thing. Then if you look at the digilocker journey, the, from 2015 to now, now that is, if you look at the scenario, the 560 crores digital documents were being linked to digilocker. Then around 12, uh, 12 crores customer base right now, that's the citizen being al already there. And every day we are signing up around 1.5 lakhs user base, uh, every day. So digilocker, the COVID and among I say that is the why that government is building the services, digital services available uh, in the mobile app uh, as a citizen. So, the, uh, the, so our journey to the building this type of large scale platform from I think COVID is the I, 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 I really looked at the COVID right now that is the 200 crores, mostly 90 crores citizen being onboarded there. It's a huge, huge thing the timeline we built. Uh, the COVID and the way it delivered for the country and without a fail, without a fail, that is the first thing, without a fail. And the challenge was something the different story, but point here is again as a country like India, we build the product for the scale and uh, DigiLocker, Umang, we in the recently that uh, engaged into the, the same way of data exchange, what is happening in the UPI, that the same way that your document needs to be exchanged on the platform. So that is why the, our third platform we built uh, recently is the API Shetu, that is the digital data exchange should happen and it's the market plus place for the APIs. And uh, the underneath is actually that the things is going on, it is the same the DigiLocker, Umong and other uh, 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 startups, fintech companies, they are taking the documents or they are using that uh, API Shetu platform, that is the same way what the NPCI built for the EPIs. Then last year we built National Academic Depository, where that all educational documents we are storing there, around uh, in the current scenario, there are around 50 crores educational certificates are there and also we are making it something called the uh, Academic Bank of Credit, the Credit Bank, uh, NAD is the previous, your mark sheet under, under NEP we are building it to the Academic Bank, so it is the Credit Banks altogether. All the educational institutes will be uh, uh, provide your credits uh, to that platform and that will be recorded and that will be very favorable um, uh, credit scores of students. So these are the things we in the DG, uh, Digital India Corporation we are being engaged. Then also we built uh, the recent times that is called the National Single Sign-On Authentication for the country. Any citizen uh, should log in to the, all the government applications once. So if they registered once, then the services will be uh, enabled the NSSO, so they don't have to log in again. So that is why that, uh, the services as a part of uh, um, seamless way of uh, government services, we are working on that. Talk about you know um, how has uh, your journey been on the technology front? Uh, you have been like developed so many applications so quickly and rolled out. Any experience that you have had with cloud AWS on during this journey? Okay, so in regards to the AWS, we, I, I definitely appreciate the AWS role as a part of the team, as a part of the platform to building the Coven. Coven we built in the I think in the two months time, and we scale in the. the something on top of that because we built Covin on the AWS and in regards to some application what we moved to cloud uh, recent time with the DigiLocker, uh, then the National Academy Depository, Umang. So we make it somewhere. Now we are more looking at uh, the, on the cloud to what is the next version of the DigiLocker 2.0, Umang 2.0 and uh, how that, that the new product line we have been coming up around the DigiLocker also. So uh, our story is yes, as a part of DigiLocker, we are looking at something called uh, uh, 50 crores user base by 2025. We are talking about the building the uh, family lockers. We are talking about building the uh, um, um, health lockers. We are now looking at organizational lockers. So this is why that we are being now into the, as a part, I think that journey as a part of moving to the cloud 
and uh, the technology available to uh, scale, I think uh, that is why that uh, this is for us as a part of from on-premise to the cloud and uh, for the country we require the cloud. And I think that thanks to AWS engineers because I, I am thankful to them because in the COVID time when the uh, we are some where that we stock up but we uh, closely we meet as a power over the VC and uh, whatever the challenge that the engineering product team face, I think that is what the remarkable way of support from them that we um, really, really thankful for the, the COVID without uh, any um, glitch COVID scale. Right. I don't think there will be anyone in this room today who's not using one or the other component from, from, from India Stack on a daily basis. You know, I'm sure when most of us got in the room in, 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 for this session today, they asked for ID card. Most of us would have shown Aadhaar. Sorry, I will not say Aadhaar card because I'm XUIDI myself and card is a no-no word. <laughs> so, you know, most of us would have shown the Aadhaar printed copy to say that who we are or UPI the way we use. But it's heartening to hear from you that, you know, how the next generation uh, applications developed around India stack have been done on AWS and the way we work together on Covin, Omang and all those kind of applications. I think the Covin will go a long way because if you look at the Covin, the Covin story, it's not the only vaccination we're looking at. It, 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 it will be definitely going towards the universal vaccination programs. Then in that Covin, I am looking at something called the building a HMI stop of the Covin. Why not that all the doctors in the country, like a vaccinator, they can give you a prescription in the digital way. So most probably hope for the best. In the next two months, we'll coming out the HMIS on the COVID. So a lot of innovation happening on top of COVID and COVID platform is here to live for a very, very long time. Very, very, it is the life of the yeah. region, I think. And you know, what's also interesting is that the way these solutions are evolving, right? Like Eager Foundation developing Divoc, that's becoming part of COVID for the verifiable, verifying of the credentials. And you know, an interesting component of the very starting point of India stack, which is Aadhaar, you know, and that is a very easy segue for me to Ramesh to come to you. Uh, MOSIP, which is, you know, a built up Aadhaar-like platform that India is taking to other countries to globally, right? So, you know, most of the name itself that we have, modular open source identity platform that itself is a key DPG. And, you know, I also understand that you're a member of United Nations ITU working group that is working on the GovStack standards and how uh, Aadhaar and other, you know, citizen-facing solutions can be rolled out to a lot of other countries, especially low-resource countries. So, you know, I would request to share with everyone the concept of GovStack itself What's the approach being taken and you know how that translates to DPI and MOSIP's role in, in the entire GovStack story? Thank you, Deepti. Good morning, everyone. So as uh, Deepti said, I'm working on MOSIP. MOSIP is housed in the IIIT Bangalore University. So it's an India project, India-built project, which is catering to the world. We have already deployed the MOSIP platform in multiple countries, already 70 million IDs plus have been issued using the MOSIP platform. And this identity platform, just like in India, Aadhaar is the basis for many other solutions built by the government towards people. MOSIP is also uh, one of the foundational solutions for all these countries. And so we have in mind that there are going to be further solutions built on top of this, right? And a lot of these are coming in the form of digital public goods from various sources. See, the GovStack initiative that uh, Deepthi was referring to is an attempt to help governments put together their own stack of solutions. In India, we have demonstrated how we are able to build upon Aadhaar, our uh, payments, direct benefit transfer mechanisms, all the tools that we have built to actually respond to crisis situations or new requirements fairly quickly. Right, and the world wants that. So all these ready-made assembly of digital public goods is being attempt attempted by various parties. GovStack is trying to define the standards so that different solutions can work together in a very interoperable way. Like they can talk to each other clearly. So identity, payments, consent, registries, the process of registration itself, all these are, are typically building blocks that go into these kind of solutions. So any departmental solutions can be built by that. 
At, uh, at Triple IT itself, we are building a MOSIP stack, the ID platform being one of the first things. We are also working on government to people solutions that include onboarding people into schemes, linking their identity into existing registries, helping uh, registries deduplicate and eliminate ghosts so that subsidies are equally, equitably distributed. So we are working on a set of solutions and ready-made components that can be used. And uh, in the process of doing any kind of country scale solution, so the challenge is to actually see that it actually scales to country level. Uh, other and other solutions have had the opportunity of being the actual solution providers, but we as a platform developer have to simulate this. And that's where I think uh, cloud has been very helpful. And uh, we have been doing our engineering workloads as well as simulations on the cloud. Uh, so also, we have an experience center, which we invite you all to come and check out at the Triple IT University in Bangalore. And this experience center itself runs on a AWS instance. We have a virtual country which we have created, and uh, that's demonstrated there. Even our pilots that we do for countries where they want to try it out, we initially start with a cloud deployment so that they can quickly experience it and then figure out their strategy of uh, uh, going live. The key in all this is uh, enabling public infrastructure at country level. So we are working towards achieving that mission. So infrastructure, obviously, is hardware, the software components, and the processes. All these have to be put together. And that, that is where I think both MOSIP as well as other uh, prime movers behind initiatives like GovStack are working towards that. You know, virtual country concept sounds very interesting that you create a virtual country and see how different citizen facing or public facing applications come together. You know, Ramesh, some, a few other keywords that I took away from what you talked about, uh, how the entire GovStack story is coming together is standards driven, interoperable, building block based approach, and of course, op open source, right, on how all these things can function. Now, you know, uh, and you know, uh, I'll come to you next, gender. and these are also very important elements for innovation to happen. And innovation also requires uh, uh, opening up and being making all these applications or interfaces accessible to others so that others can innovate on top of that. Uh, you know, and I know that one of the key principles that Eager Foundation follows while de developing your platform or DPGA is that how you can allow others to innovate on top of that, right? So can you share the organization philosophy and approach behind this and how, again, cloud can be a force multiplier, what kind of innovations you are seeing in this space? Your thoughts on that, please. Sure. So uh, the, the uh, fundamental architectural principle that Ego follows when they're building DPGs, like Digit, is at the heart of the system uh, reside these shared data registries. So this is a common source of truth. The data is really the integral single source of truth that everybody else can leverage. And on top of that, there are common services that uh, can be used for doing uh, specific types of things. For example, user management could be a standard service. Workflow could be a standard service. Uh, notifications could be a standard service. These are all common services. And on top of this, we have built a number of contextual applications to solve for specific use cases. So the example I gave earlier about public grievance redressal is a specific example of an application leveraging these common services. So these common services become building blocks in their own right, and they come with their own data infrastructure under the hood. So this data is common, so this same data can be used by multiple applications. So for example, if you, have, if you, if you are a citizen, uh, you can, your data is stored, your ID is there in the system, and this ID can be used to do, for example, a public grievance, logging a public grievance, or paying property tax, or applying for a trade license, or paying water charges, and so on. The different applications by the same user registry can be used for multiple applications that sort of go in there. That's the fundamental architecture. Uh, this allows applications to be built on top, which are contextual. So an example of that, to talk about innovation specifically, is when COVID struck us uh, two and a half years back, uh, we had curfew across the country and people couldn't move around. And we actually rolled out an e-pass system in about, I think, seven to eight days. So we, we leveraged the existing uh, building blocks of Digit and we rolled out an e-pass system. And this is rolled out in 10 states over a two-week period. And we issued upwards of a million 
uh, million passes for essential workers to move around freely in their respective cities and states. That's an example of how quickly we can innovate using the platform approach where you have common services which can be leveraged to, and you can co build contextual applications on top to solve for specific, uh, specific problems. Uh, another big, big uh, vector that eGov uses is the leveraging of the ecosystem. We believe that we cannot be the only ones who are solving these problems and there is a need to truly democratize the, uh, so, the solutions across the entire uh, what we call Samaj, Sarkar and Bazaar. So Samaj refers to citizens and civil society groups. Sarkar, of course, is government. And, and uh, Bazaar is, of course, the market players. All three of them have different incentives to solving problems. And all three need to come together, along with academia and startups, to solve these problems. And the fact that we have these common services and well-defined APIs that, uh, uh, that expose interoperability, and make it easy to inter interoperate, allows people to build on top of these respective applications, uh, build applications on top of the platform, solving for local problems that they may face in their respective cities and states. Uh, partners have built upwards of 30 solutions in the last uh, four to five years, as a simple statistic. They have built applications on top, and, and uh, they're deployed in various states across the country today. Uh, and this is not, this is possible this is made easier by use of cloud because cloud lets us uh, do quicker performance testing and quickly onboard this. E-pass wouldn't, wouldn't have been possible in two weeks but for the use of technologies like cloud. So cloud truly drives uh, you know, faster deployment, one-click deployment of, of uh, applications. Uh, it really aids in uh, solving multiple problems through use of cloud platform approach and the ecosystem that comes together to solve these problems. Thanks. Thanks, Chandrinu. I mean, when you talked about uh, how this API-based approach and allowing others to innovate, another example that strikes me and that we see very, very commonly being used by startups, especially agri-techs, etc., in India is, you know, at AWS, we have this registry of open data, which hosts this petabytes, you know, of data on things like planetary scale, planetary scale, satellite images updated on a regular basis to genomic data, weather data, etc. And I personally work with a lot of startups who use, uh, say, you know, the satellite data available for things like farmer advisory and insurance, crop insurance, uh, uh, settlement and things like that. Yeah. So the innovation that can happen once all this, all the the data or the application or you know these kind of solutions are exposed to ecosystem in a modular and API easily accessible way, there's just no limit to what we can really achieve and what we can really do get done to improve. You know, our society and the lives of everyday citizens, really. You know, Mr. Marek, I'll come to you. You know, recently, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister talked about international collaboration, cooperation, and India Stack Global. how India Stack and some of government of India's DPGs will be extended to other countries, right? So I would request you to talk about uh, this entire initiative expansion plan and how uh, you're going about driving some of these uh, initiatives. Yeah, I think uh, if you look at the scenario as Aadhaar, I think Masip is taking that part of the identity across the country. Then now, Kovin we declared as the part of the product, the Prime Minister declared that, okay, Kovin we make it open source. And let's that uh, private industries who are working in the software, so they should take it forward. Uh, building a platform is one aspect. The second aspect is what is the ecosystems around you, take it forward. So. Now the COVID code is public, uh, available, and uh, there are the, some registered partners. They are being there, and they are uh, as a part of the, the because the code is available. The second part is it is on the cloud, so the templates is also available. If you want to make it to the other countries, it's now it's so much easy that you take the templates, the platform as well as the codes. So it is easier for now. If you want to take the DigiLocker, you can take it forward. The, the platform over the clouds. Then the source code. So now it is easier. In the earlier days, when you are on-premise, it is 
I do not see uh, taking a platform to the any other countries. In the current scenario, when you look at in the clouds, you look at okay, it is on the AWS, okay, now the, um, uh, create the templates and give me the templates for the hosting it to the for the other countries. So, that is much more easier, much more easier for right now. Only point is now the government as a part is uh, inside the country because these are do not require anything as a part you want to give digital to the another uh, some states, you do not require. But for other countries definitely you require, but only point is now we are looking at as a part of the we heard of India stack global and we want to come out a some divisions uh, inside the digital India corporations. So, they have to engage with the different private companies and uh, other ecosystem partners, they will take it forward. So, that is why that we are looking at yes, uh, few countries have been um, uh, uh, being interested, one aspect is the Malaysian company, another is the African company, that the two companies are being interested at all to roll out in the African countries and my, so only we will go how about it, how what these companies will do or the Indian companies will do. I think that will be the one point that we have to take it forward as a part S. We can't uh, give it to them because it is what that uh, we want that okay, if the source code or platform is uh, there, if there are some other countries want to take, they should take it free. I, I do not see anything, any challenge as a part. But only point is yes, there should be a division to engage because we are coming from an operational team that uh, from day in day out, we do not have that side of the okay taking to forward, but I think that uh, definitely as a part of uh, Digital India Corporation uh, will engage with the different private partnerships uh, to take it forward. I think the point that you made that as government you are doing operations and you need to separate division and I think MOSIP is a very classic example, right? Exactly. That how Aadhaar as the base platform is getting converted into an identity platform and as a product that can be offered to others. Uh, you know, uh, so, uh, uh, so, so, and another very interesting point before Armesh I come to you, you made was that you're seeing interest from Malaysia and uh, African countries, right? In fact, that's been my experience as well. Uh, I work with a lot of startups in impact area like agriculture, healthcare, smart cities, etc. And I do see a lot of demand, you know, given the similarity, demographical, economical, and even to a large extent weather conditions also similarity between Southeast Asian countries and Africa, demographic similarities that we have, common challenges that we have. So I do see a lot of demand for India-based solutions, India-based startups in these countries. So I'm sure that, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the friendly, uh, the, the, the diplomatic, uh, digital diplomat diplomacy that the Prime Minister talks about and, you know, how a lot of these applications can be taken to other countries, it's going to really create a different level of impact globally and not just in India, right? So. I think uh, if you look at, we have come out a policy on the open source that any government codes is a free and it should be accessible by the academic, the, the, the private companies. If you look at the, there is just policy is already there. Uh, we build an open source platform, let that government should open their source codes for the academicians and the privates. If you look at the, what is the harm to us, nothing will harm to us. If a uh, source code, the government is same for uh, across the world, right? Challenges are same for government. Challenges are the same for across the world. If you say, if there is the Indian products available and anybody, any company wants to take it forward, there is the two things. One is the source code should be available, so the customization. Another is the now, the, somewhere it should be there so that they can easily see, they, they can customize, they can test, they can take it forward. So that is why that now that as a part of something that uh, um, now the, uh, I think that our division is being very keen to, yeah, uh, to let's work together to take it global because end of the day that uh, any things we are building for us, it can be for other government also. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, make, makes perfect sense, right? Challenges are same across same the across world for governments and citizens everyone, right? And you know, Ramesh, I'll come to you with that. Uh, uh, was Mr. Nayak talk, talked about that it all needs to be packaged in the right way and, and taken it to other governments and that's pretty much what you're doing with MOSEP, right? And you are working with a lot of resource constrained countries if I may say. Uh, so, you know, what are some levers that you think can really be used to accelerate the adoption of such platform, the packaging and, you know, what role different players uh, uh, can, can, can perform in this regard, you know. I'm sure we have a lot of builders in this room, a lot of system integrators in this room. So, uh, so, you know, what is your perspective on what can really be done to expedite other countries fast-tracking their digital journey and uh, what can be done in this regard? Um, I totally agree with what Mr. Nayak said, right? 
what can be built in one place can be used elsewhere because the challenges are pretty much the same wherever we are in the globe. And uh, thanks to COVID, I think people have woken up and realized that governments need to get their act together, be highly responsive, and uh, everywhere there is a sense of hurry. They all want it now. But uh, while they want it now, many places, while they have uh, good policies, good thinkers, they don't have the capacity within that country to be able to actually deliver and build these solutions and operate them. And they are looking at India and other places who have already evolved and implemented these solutions for handholding and expertise. So there is a specific gap there. And uh, at MOSEP, we are trying to address that by helping countries with capacity building. While we do provide training, as well as uh, some kind of handholding, uh, there is a limit to what one organization can actually do, right? Also, uh, while the problems are the same, every country is unique, right? Their processes, the culture, their state of existence, their political climate, many things actually impact it. So it is very important to actually spend time there, understand it, localize the solutions, and make it work for them, which basically means that this is going to take a lot of work from a lot of parties to actually make it happen. And that, according to me, is an opportunity. And uh, we are, as part of our capacity building, trying to build local organization strength. So we work with uh, training integrators and uh, solution providers in different parts of the globe, train them to be able to provide these solutions locally. And uh, you're not just ID, right? Uh, today, what people want are all kinds of fundamental systems. They want UPI. They want UPI-like mechanisms. They want ID. They want digital certificates. They want healthcare to be better. They want education sector to be reformed. So like that, there are opportunities in every sector that are happening. And all of this are essentially opportunities for uh, solution providers. I think the AWS ecosystem and network can very easily step in. And uh, as I was saying, the thought processes are different. Some countries are worried about speed of execution. Some countries are worried about sovereignty of their data. right? But as technologists, as solution providers, we all know that we can either use public cloud or private cloud. So name it. There is a way to package and provide these solutions. But what everybody wants is something that starts making a difference in the life of people. right? And they want it as soon as possible. That, that's what we are after. I would request that look at all these digital public goods. While they are being built by various companies, we can't take it to every country and every department and every place where there is a need. And I think that's where uh, you can step in and, uh, and do it. And, and for the governments who are there, I would uh, ask them to follow Mr. Nayak's recommendation. Don't shy away from open source. Don't shy away from being open and reusing things. And uh, that is a way to being faster to where you want to actually reach. You can reach your goals faster. Thanks, Ramesh, for that. You know, I think, uh, as you said, the role that people sitting in this room can do is one is, um, and I'll just summarize even what Chandar had talked about was, once these DPGs get implemented, they get converted into deep, one is you know, converting the DPG into DPI itself, right? The role that everyone can play in this room in implementing these DPG, be it eGov different platform within the country or other countries, or most of what you're doing, you know, really, uh, how do you bundle it, package it, bring in both complementary solutions and implement it in different countries. Second area is for startups, et cetera, how you can do innovate on top of this DPI, be it, you know, different India stack application, what new can be built on top of that. And again, we have very good examples uh, uh, amongst our ecosystem, et cetera, it's itself that is doing it. You know, or, you know, we create those simple one-click deployment infrastructure as a code kind of a template you know, Mr. Nayak talked about templatization earlier, open source, templatized, so that others can deploy things quickly. That's something I think we can really do to expedite how, uh, globally, how uh, services can be brought, you know, the, the, the citizen delivery services can really be facilitated and made better for global citizens at large. Uh, I think we have a few more seconds for Sonali for, uh, for any questions from the audience. 
no? Okay. Great. So uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for, for your time this morning. And thank you for being such a uh, patient audience with us. Uh, been a pleasure having you here. And, you know, I hope we all enjoy the rest of the day here, listening to different leaders, different thought processes, interesting solution discussions that are coming through the day. So uh, have a great day, everyone. Great summit. And see you all around. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much, Deepti. Can we have a big round of applause for Deepti, Mr. Nayak, Mr. Chandar, and Mr. Ramesh for sharing their insights on building blocks for DPG.